Hey everybody, this is Business of Design, episode 65, and this podcast is a lovely little interview with Cecil Adams, who is Vice President of Curry & Co., one of our favorite suppliers. We recorded this while we were at High Point Market this past spring. We spoke with High Point Market Authority just yesterday, in fact, and they are gearing up for the fall market. As you know, High Point happens twice a year. Soon, Business of Design will have some announcements about what our role is going to be at High Point Market going forward, and we're excited to share that with you. In this interview, you are going to hear Cecil share what I think is wise advice. Be brave. And I started thinking about all the ways I need to be brave and maybe you can relate in my business. For example, I have to be brave when I ask for the job. I go to a consultation and I know this is a project that's perfect for me. And it takes courage for me to say, this is an ideal job for my company and we want to work with you. So there's an example of where I have to be brave. I suppose it goes without saying that every single time I I have to ask for the money, I have to be brave. When I say no to a client, uh, a request around the timing of something or even the style of something, that takes real courage and bravery. So recently we are doing a project and it's I think it's like the fifth or sixth project we've done for this client. I'm not sure what possessed her, but she decided to go shopping and came home with two chairs after we'd already done a presentation and was very excited about them and they could not have been more wrong for everything we showed her. And I had to tell her under no circumstances would that work with everything else we picked. And her decision was for us to work around them. So I said, fine, we'll put them in an upstairs sitting room. But I let her know that it really was impeding the flow and feel of the whole house. And I was really disappointed. And whatever they charged to return them, she should do it. And she sat on that for about a month and then called me back and said, I got rid of those damn chairs. You win. Um, That was really hard for me to do. And maybe 15, 20 years ago, I wouldn't have had the courage to do it. But I know that the project depends on me being brave all the time. Um, Anytime I have to confess a mistake that I made or that a supplier made, I think that takes courage and bravery. Owning my part in a disagreement or a conflict requires bravery. And then presenting what I know is the best choice, even if it's outside the client's budget or outside what I know to be their comfort zone. I got a question on the forum today at Business of Design. If you are a monthly or annual member and you take any course on Business of Design, you can ask me anything. So effectively, I'm your mentor. And somebody reached out and said, I'm too scared to just do two options. I do four or five or six or even more options sometimes. And really that comes down to me to courage and bravery. I have to be willing to make the decision on what I will show the client and then stand by that decision with confidence. And when I show the client six or seven options, it's confusing to the client. And what I learned over and over again, they would say to me, but Kimberly, which one do you like? Because they are paying me for my opinion. So I think it takes real bravery and real courage to narrow it down to two solid options and go from start to finish through the whole project with the one option in mind. So that's just off the top of my head, different ways that I need to be brave. I'm sure you guys can think of a hundred other ways, but I loved Cecil's message. Now, before you get to hear Cecil, you're going to hear a brief little chat between myself and program specialist Jean Laudenbach. We were at High Point. We thought this episode was going to air while we were at High Point, but we decided instead to run with the talk we did in the tent at the point. So that was episode 56. Um, But really worth listening to. Great conversation. Thank you to Cecil and thank you to Curry & Co. And enjoy the show, everybody. Oh, one more thing. I forgot. You're going to hear Janine and I say, come with us on a trip, and we sincerely mean that, but then we mentioned Palm Springs, and at that point, Palm Springs wasn't sold out, but now it is sold out. If you want to be on the waiting list, let us know. Otherwise, in 2019, start mentally preparing 
to travel with Business of Design. You can use it as a write-off. We learned a lot from the first group we took to High Point, and we are going to apply all that knowledge to the next uh, retreat and other trips, subsequent trips that we have planned. Uh, Thank you guys so much for your support. Uh, We would appreciate it if you could reach out and rate us on the podcast and give us a thumbs up and uh, enjoy the show. Welcome to the Business of Design podcast with Kimberly Selden. Business of Design is the coaching community for independent designers like you. We know it takes more than hard work and talent to successfully run a professional design firm. There are proven business strategies that can solve your immediate business challenges and transform your life. Don't try to do this alone. Join today and you'll have access to more than 100 video courses plus Kimberly Selden as your mentor and guide. Unlike traditional coaching, which can take years to produce tangible results, BOD is a fast track to immediate results for independent interior designers, decorators, architects, stagers, and landscapers just like you. Monthly membership is only $67.50. Annual members save two months and have access to Kimberly's contracts. What are you waiting for? We all know design matters. At Business of Design, we think designers matter too. Hey everybody, this is Business of Design. You're in the right place if you want to have an amazing time thinking about your business and growing your business into a thriving enterprise. We are coming to you from High Point Market. If you've never been, uh, you probably are curious about what it's like. If you have been, you're probably wondering how we found a quiet space to do our podcast. Um, Well, we kicked Mr. Curry out of his office at Curry & Co. because it was the only private space in the house. And we decided to do an interview here with with Cecil Adams, who is the Vice President and Creative Director of Curry & Co., one of our go-to suppliers when it comes to all kinds of beautiful things that we sell our clients. And we had an amazing talk. He's charming. He's lovely. He gets us. Um, he's seen designers over the years make all the mistakes that we've all make, made, and he's uh, going to encourage you during the podcast to be brave and step up and own your value, and I, for one, can't hear that message often enough. Before we get to Cecil's interview, I want to introduce you to someone who's really important to us at Business of Design, and that's Janine Laudenbach, who is our programming specialist. Janine, say hi to everybody. Hello, Kimberly, and hello, all of you out there, as we bring you all kinds of exciting news from High Point Market here in North Carolina. Janine has been a behind-the-scenes person with Business of Design forever, and prior to that has been the person who has helped shape all of the trips we've done to Paris and Prague and uh, Budapest, and where where else have you gone? Oh New, goodness, New we've York? We've been to Spain, we've been to New York. <laughs> We've been all kinds of great places where we've taught about design. Right. And our focus has been, during the last 15 years, we've brought consumers to all of those places, design enthusiasts, just to teach them about art and architecture and interior design. And uh, I guess it's been two years now, Janine, we had a conversation. You said, we got to start taking business of design people on these excursions because when you're traveling, you're learning so much about design. Right, and it's a whole new audience really for Kimberly Selden and for the business of design to actually have a different audience as we learn about things that we've been teaching for so many years. Since you've been on every single trip and since you're instrumental in planning every single trip, what do you think are the things um, that designers take away in general when they go to a new city and they study architecture and design? What are some of the things that they learn? Well, I think there's always things to learn from a specific area that you might bring back to whoever your clients are. I think most importantly, though, in business of design is really understanding the value of what we all get to do and what we bring to our clients. And I I really think that the people that are joining you on business design trips will benefit from that. They'll they'll be able to really um, understand their value and really be able to, to transfer that onto their, their clients. Yeah. One of the things I think that has really helped me, um, own my value, I guess, is having knowledge behind me because my trap, my clients travel, they've been to Paris, they've been to Barcelona or whatever. So if I haven't been there, if I haven't studied and if I don't know more than they know, I don't quite fit in to their conversations. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Exactly. And I think that everybody that's traveled with us either stateside or abroad really 
gains from the, the experiences they have just from seeing different lifestyles, different types of design, different homes, and all of those beautiful things that we get to show them. Do you remember the first time you ever traveled for work and like especially far away? And what, what, what do you think? I mean, beside from business skills, were there other life skills that you learned? Well, just confidence, learning to get out and, and do something on my own. And all of that, all of that translates into how I run my personal business or how I run my affairs. That, that sense of confidence and knowledge in what I'm doing has really been helpful to me just on a personal level. Yeah, I would, I would say that that's true as well. So we're at High Point. We're visiting something like 12 or 13 showrooms as a group. And then we're going to have free time. And what are they going to do during free time? Well, if it were me, I would be shopping. There are just so <laughs> many beautiful things, not just for the clients, but also personally, just things that I think are absolutely gorgeous and, and really getting out there and seeing what's available. For so many of us, if we don't have the experience to see these amazing showrooms, we don't actually know what's out there. And that's one of the things Cecil will talk about, too, in that bravery is really exposing clients to what's available. Sometimes we get into our box. Sometimes we don't really think about all the options available to clients. And that's what High Point is going to do for everybody that's coming with us. Sometimes I find that the client will give a designer the budget and the, the designer somehow thinks that it's their job to deliver everything the client wants for that budget. Well, that's not our job, right? Our job is to price the things the client wants, and then allow the client to decide if they want to spend that much, mm -hmm. right? I, I've never had a situation where a client said, I want to spend this much, and that was actually the budget. Right. We don't know what we don't know. Right. <laughs> so it's our job to provide them with some things that, as Cecil put it, they can fall in love with. Exactly. All right. Janine, you're awesome. You, We are going to try to, to get 30-something designers into these showrooms as a group, and provide them with a drink, mm -hmm. <laughs> one drink. We've got. We're gonna have to watch this. Exactly. It's gonna get crazy when you come to High Point. There's a lot of food and there's a lot of drink, um, and then uh, we'll be debriefing them as we leave the showroom. We'll talk about what we're learning on the way and on the coach back and forth. Um, when you come to High Point on your own, there are shuttle buses that you can j use. We have a private coach who's taking us. So the advantage of that is we can do learnings mm -hmm. coming and going to High Point. Exactly. They can ask questions and kind of debrief after the day. But we're going to have a lot of fun. Cecil's a great interview. You're the best, best business of design advocate in the world and we love everything you do. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. All right, you guys, come on our next trip and you'll meet oh next trip by the way palm springs palm springs cannot miss it can't miss it come and hang out with janine and i and i'm sure cheryl's going to be there as well everybody um enjoy the rest of the show i'm going to introduce you now to cecil adams well, this is exciting. High Point, there's thousands of people around. We are hidden in a back room at Curry & Co. And Cecil Adams is the vice president and creative director, right? Yes. And you're, have you ever been hidden in a back room at Curry & Co. when there's so much beautiful stuff out front? Only when there's someone really interesting to speak to. <laughs> <laughs> you can see how Cecil got his job at the head of the company with his charm. So this is very exciting. Thank you for taking time because I know High Point's probably, is it? the busiest time of your year? This is a really super busy time for us. Uh, it's our time to do all of our introductions. So there's a lot of preparation and uh, several days of training and lots of stuff going on. So by the time the market officially starts, it almost feels like it should be over, oh. but it's just beginning. Right. So. And you guys have to keep that happy face up for how many days in a row? Uh, seven, seven, I think. Is that how many now? <laughs> we like to call it seven weddings in seven days. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Well, everybody's fresh. We walked in today and they're like, hello, welcome to Curry & Co. Would you like a drink? And we're like, this is great. Well, I'm glad you're here today. On Wednesday, it might be a little different. No, I've <laughs> actually, I've been here toward the end and everybody's just as lovely and just as charming. So oh, what, you. what you notice when you walk in the showroom, first of all, is just an, an enormous selection of beautiful quality product. Um, you have to be very careful as you're walking around the showroom because lots of people are, they're, they're looking up, their mm -hmm. necks are craned mm -hmm. and they're guying over the gorgeous chandeliers, etc. So you, it's really easy to run into someone, which is not always a bad thing right. because we're all friendlies here. Mm -hmm. um, tell me what you envision happening for Korean Co. at High Point this year. 
Well, uh, hopefully all of our wonderful customers and lots of new ones will come to see us and discover us and enjoy all the product that we're presenting. And uh, hopefully we will have things that will fit into their projects and plans and uh, they will spec those things and we'll do what we're here to do, which is sell product, present new product and get people excited about our company. Well, you do that really well. And it, of course, it's not just lighting anymore. You've really branched off into a number of directions. That's correct. We're very well known for our chandeliers and wall sconces, and we've continued to grow our lighting categories, even though we started out as a garden furniture and accessory company. So uh, there was an evolution from that. We still have garden furniture and accessories, and now we've pretty much got all categories. We have some custom upholstery. We have a case goods program, metal furniture, outdoor, outdoor lighting, chandeliers, wall sconces, floor lamps, table lamps, so lots of stuff. Right. And you hear this a lot, and you know this from firsthand experience, that designers tend to be ultra busy. And finding those resources that vet product for you and create mm-hmm. kind of a curated um, selection of products really makes our job easier, right? Mm-hmm. We come here and we love the chandeliers. And so now we can step into case goods. We can step into the other lines that you have, knowing that there's a very dedicated team of buyers who are selective about what lands here. Correct. Our design team, our sales team and marketing are all involved in the selection of the products that we choose to introduce. Uh, this market, we have 238 new introductions. Wow. Uh, our design team would develop a little over 400 items so that there's a shopping, quote unquote, we like to shop too. Uh, there's <laughs> a shopping uh, meeting that takes place when, we, when we, the design team presents all the new product and then we decide which ones we're going to carry um, and you know put in the line. And we are very conscious of our clientele. Mm -hmm. And we really like to talk to designers a lot. We always have uh, from the beginning. Mr. Curry was always interested in what designers were doing and what kind of projects they were, you know, what was going on. And uh, so we really uh, put in effort to have all the product on the shelf. If not, when you come to the show uh, right away, Um, everything's up on the website now. Um, our catalog, we've always had our catalog printed and printed materials with all the new product in, all the information. So we really want it to be easy to do business with. You are easy to do business with. And I think part of that is because you're a family business at heart, you're still a mm-hmm. family business. Mm-hmm. And so I've always had that feeling that um, we're well taken care of here. How much does the catalog weigh now? I, I remember some <laughs> years trying to take it back with me. And, uh, oh, I don't, I, mm. it's a brick. Um, <laughs> it's about uh, the it's size of a toddler. It's 638 pages or something like that. This one actually is the largest one we've ever had. And, you know, last year that was the largest one we've ever <laughs> okay. had. So uh, I probably about six and a half pounds or six pounds, I okay. think, five or six pounds. Anyway. Very exciting. It might be might be worth taking home anyway. It'll keep you, it, it will keep you engaged on your plane ride home, wherever exactly. that is. Exactly. You can do a workout with it. <laughs> Pick up two. Um, okay, so so now you open the door here to the topic that's near and dear to us, and that's like, as designers, where do you see room for us to improve our practices? Because you see it from a totally different perspective. Mm-hmm. Are there key areas that you think, I would love to see the industry move forward in these key areas? Well, that is a very interesting question. Um, We tend to look at it from the perspective of how can we better serve our customers. So um, I think just from uh, maybe uh, ordering information, finding your rep, you know, doing that kind of thing, I think some of our some of some of our uh, customers maybe don't understand exactly how that process works, or they don't necessarily know who to go to. Um, okay. Maybe they don't cases. even, maybe they, they don't even rely enough on their reps to help them be excellent at what they're doing. Like that's what I find sometimes they try to go it alone or something when the rep is there who has great knowledge and can help with everything from, you know, the purchase to the shipping, mm-hmm. etc. Yeah. My, I would advise them to not go it alone. I mean, we're here to, and we want to help you. Um, 
So we still we have people in our customer service office who answer the phone. If you call, there's a there's someone there, who someone who has knowledge, someone who can answer your questions. Um, they can take them, you know, any way that you want to send them to us. You can call. You can fax. We even still have a fax. You machine, have a fax, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, you you can. Uh, um, Email us, write us, send us a homing pigeon, <laughs> any of those things. I will say that I think that uh, one thing that we're experiencing now because of a lot of the changing tax laws is that you know, these tax forms that have to be filled out for different states, you know, all buyer, all designers are working all over the country. They're not just working in one place. You may have a client who you're in Colorado, they've got a house in Florida, all that kind of right. stuff. So I think uh, be aware of the forms that we need for you to fill out and make sure that they're filled out properly. It sounds really simple, but it will expedite the process of if you're a new customer, getting your account open, mm -hmm. getting product to you right away. Uh, you might think you're going to get something in 48 hours, but then we haven't got the proper paperwork. And then, you know, you may have made a promise to someone they're going to get something quick. And, right. you know, so just uh, it's all those little details that really right. make a difference. Do you foresee a future where maybe because I feel like I'm hearing designers start to talk about this. They'll just pay the taxes when they make the purchase. Some do that already. Just, just, to, mm -hmm. just to eliminate that problem. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't bother you that they would choose to do that. As long as the taxes are paid and everybody's square legally, it doesn't really matter. Right. I think things have to be documented. And this yeah. is an ongoing process, something that's kind of new uh, in terms of how these things are collected. So be aware. You know, be informed. And we can help inform you if, you're, if you have questions about right. that. And then don't be shy about letting your clients know that that's, that, those are taxes. That's right. not going into your pocket for your next vacation. Right. That's the government. And we want to keep the government running. And exactly. this is why we do our best right. to contribute. OK, well, so that's, that's really good information. Um, and I do think, in my experience, a lot of designers don't rely heavily enough on their reps mm -hmm. um, to... I mean, once you get in a good groove with a rep, man, you can be lazy. Really, right? <laughs> like, I will sometimes... They can do a lot for you. Really, really and truly, I'll say, remember those chandeliers we did for so-and-so? We've got another project. It's the same size room. I was thinking something similar. What do you have that's similar? But, new? boom, I have, a, I have an image in my inbox. I have the dimensions, the tear sheet. I have everything I need mm -hmm. to be really fast at my job right. um, so, that, so that I can build the client for every minute I work but I have a lot of integrity around actually working the fewest number of minutes possible to get to the right solution, mm -hmm. right? That's our commitment mm -hmm. all the time. Okay, so that's a big area that we all need to think a little bit about. What about um, in the area of just back-end business? Are, do you see them um, being comfortable with talking about money in general, I guess, is what I would say. Well, being a creative person <clears throat> and having had the point in my life where I've had to ask for the money, uh, I would say that that's a very difficult thing for some of us to do. Yeah. Um, but I had to support myself. I had to learn how to ask for the money. And uh, I think that's really important. And if you're not comfortable with that, maybe you can partner with an accountant or, you know, someone who can help you with that. Because yeah. I think you really want to get that out of the way and get to the fun part. So figure the budget out and, you know, and make sure that, uh, you're valuing yourself properly and the things that you're doing there, you know, you're providing a very unique service and you're developing a relationship with this client where you're going to kind of make their dream come true about how they want to live. So there's a lot of value there. And just, you know, I think you should feel like, don't be afraid that you're going to charge too much or, or whatever, you know, believe in yourself, know what you're worth. If the client says no, there'll be another client. That's how I feel about yeah. it. But I completely understand the fear that is attached to that. We're both and nodding our heads, by yeah. the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, I, for sure yeah. we understand. Yeah. It sounds easy, but when you're really in the middle of it, it's really hard to say, well, you know, you got to pay me. Uh, you know, and right. this, is what I'm, this is what I expect. And, you know, I think the designers I know who are very successful have a way to get all that out of the way 
at the beginning. It's all black and white. Everybody signed their contract or however they want to do it. And I think that that's really important. Yeah. So there's really, there's not going to be a shortcut here. Like we're going to have to all figure out how to ask for that money, even though it's not our favorite thing. I, right. I don't know a single designer who says, my favorite thing about design is the money. No. <laughs> like That's not it. <laughs> but if you don't get the money, you don't get to continue doing the design. Right. And you don't get to have those beautifully finished rooms that you're proud of that appear in magazines. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I would, I always think about is I meet so many designers who say, oh, I, I would love to buy something at Korean company, but my clients won't afford it. They will. You just don't show it to them. Yeah. You hold back. Mm -hmm. So how do you think they get the courage to move the marker up a bit higher in terms of presenting better quality goods to their clients? I think you're always going to encounter the client who doesn't understand the value of things, but they understand maybe what they gravitate toward. So I would not be afraid to show them things that may or may not fit in their budget and, and try to get them, you know, let them be driven by what they like. I mean, obviously everyone doesn't have an unlimited budget and you have to pick and choose, but I think if you edit the selection down, then you're not giving yourself or them the opportunity to be exposed to these other things. Right. So, you know, I mean, if, if your lighting budget is X, or for if your, you know, your budget is, I don't know, $1,500 wholesale for a chandelier going into a dining room in a project, but there's really a $2,000 one or a $2,500 one that would really tell the story, mm -hmm. why not show it to them and ask them and, yeah. you know, tell them this is what it costs. Mm -hmm. You know, I think you'd get a lot more yeses than, than you, you might you would get a yourself credit for. Yes, you would get a lot more yeses. Mm -hmm. Let the customer say no. Too right. often we say no before the customer even has a chance. And sometimes, even though the client says, I want to spend you know $3,000 on a chandelier, let's say, they don't actually know. Um, and, and often they're driving a BMW and they're, you know, vacationing in Aspen. And if you show them a 4000 or a 5000 or a $6,000 chandelier, if it's the right one that's really going to make the space, they're going to say yes. Yeah. I have a joke that I'll do with my clients sometimes. I tell them, think of this as the Italian boyfriend. Mm -hmm. He's very expensive, but we can't live without him. <laughs> and then the husbands will laugh and they go, okay, fine, let's do it, whatever. <laughs> but so often lighting is that sculptural focal point of sure. the room. Like it hits you right in the face when you walk in and it's the thing everybody notices. So I would much rather splurge on a few key items and pull back in a few places if I have to, but not just have that middle of the road all the way across. Absolutely. I think, you know, uh, give your client the opportunity to fall in love with something. Perfect. And that again, so what they, I believe would happen, they, you, you give them this thing that's, that they if they believe it's going to be, you know, it's like so great. I love it. It's wonderful. Well, that love is going to transfer onto you. And so then you're going to be the person who, oh, when they're, you know, when folks come in and say, my God, your place looks so fabulous. They're going to say, oh, my designer was amazing. No, no, no. They're not going to talk about the fact that they had to spend X number more dollars on the project. They're going to, you know, they're yeah. really, what they're going to be doing is sharing information about you to someone who might turn into your next client. That's right. Yeah, it's so true. Uh, thank you so much for your time today. We like to um, end every podcast with something we call design intervention. And it's um, something that you think is immediately actionable that would be valuable to someone who runs an interior design business. It might be, it, it could be anything. I don't know if something comes to mind. I kind of threw this at Cecil. He wasn't really, <laughs> we're making him make it up on the spot. Mm -hmm. but it could be, it could be something you learned early in business. You know, what you just said, um, give your chance, a cl your clients a chance to fall in love with it. That's, that's actually really good design intervention. But if there's something kind of actionable, you'd like to see designers do this thing. What would it be? Uh, I'd like to see them be brave. We're almost done. I'd like to see them be brave. I'd like to see them be more fearless in their work and believe in themselves. You know, figure out how to pull that thing out of you that's going to really make you and the client really happy. I love that. Be brave. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, well, we uh, we can all be more brave if we have reliable um, suppliers around us. So best of luck at the market. I'm, of course, you're going to stand out and be a superstar among all the thousands of places here. This is the place you want to be, and not the least of which is because there's always a fabulous bar. Well, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> please come and enjoy the food and drinks at any of our showrooms. Love to see. Thank you so much. Thank you for being part of the Business of Design community. If you love what we do, please show your support by subscribing to the podcast and rating our efforts. Remember, you can be a part of the podcast by sharing your comments, ideas, and questions via the BOD hotline at 416-780-9187, extension 107, or by sending an MP3 file to info at businessofdesign.com. And when you're ready to transform your business and your life, sign up for a monthly or annual membership. Together, we will achieve extraordinary results. Start today.